Hello fellow coffee botherers, in this video we're going to be talking about this, the Eureka Mignon Libra. This is the latest in the Mignon line at the time of writing and it's their first grind by weight grinder. We'll put the dimensions on the screen. It has most of the same features as a Speciality and you'll notice I'm hopefully pronouncing it right now. Le mie scusi to any Italians for my awful attempts in the past. I actually asked Eureka to tell me how to pronounce it correctly and I've been practicing. Benissimo. The specs. 55mm hardened steel flat burrs, a 310 watt motor that spins the burrs at 1350 RPM, stepless adjustment, silent technology, two programmable doses and on-demand grinding, a grinding speed of about 1.4 to 1.8 grams per second for espresso. Eureka's ACE system, anti-clumping, anti-static, it's slightly taller than the Speciality to allow the space required for the scales and the tearing system. They're all manually calibrated in the factory, so when you take it out of the box, the grind by weight is completely configured with nothing for you to do. See the link in the description to see them being calibrated during Kyle Rosal's factory tour. I'll go through the features and specs shortly, but first of all, just to explain the point of a grinder like this, if you weren't sure. There are a few different types of grinders when it comes to how dosing is done. Traditional hopper fed grinders either grind on demand or timed, so you'd either weigh your dose each time or just weigh them when you're dialing in and then use the timed dosing from there onwards until you dial in again. Weighing every time would give you a more precise dose of course. Single doser grinders are increasingly popular and with these you just weigh your dose and then grind a lot. Grind by weight grinders are hopper based grinders with inbuilt scales to allow them to give you the dose weight you've told it to give you. Why would you want a grind by weight? Speed and convenience. You can just put the porter filter into the cradle and get your desired dose every time, no messing about. They're very convenient in a commercial setting and some home baristas prefer this kind of convenience too. There are pros and cons for single dosing versus hopper dosing and I'm not gonna get into that here. If you're looking for a single doser grinder then clearly this isn't for you. There are loads of options from Eureka and various other brands. I'm very happy with single dosing. I don't usually see that as inconvenient. It's a fairly quick workflow. Yeah, if you stood in front of a queue of people all waiting for coffee then you might need a bit more speed but I think single dosing is plenty quick enough for most home users. But having said that, I have to say being able to walk up to the grinder and just push the porter filter in and then tamp is a very pleasant, convenient experience, so I can completely understand anyone who wants this kind of experience at home. Starting off with the way it looks, it's a lovely looking grinder as you can see. I asked Eureka if they could loan me the Ferrari red one because on screen that colour looked really cool and I can tell you it looks just as cool in the flesh. It looks and feels very nice quality, it's reassuringly heavy, stainless steel body, it's got the nice chunky grind adjustment, stainless steel adjustable portafilter cradle, all very premium quality, exactly what I'd expect from Eureka. By the way, if you've had a Speciality in the past, they did update the burrs several years ago, which mainly just made them slightly faster. So if you have an older Speciality and it isn't quite as fast, this will probably be why. As I've mentioned, it's the same 310 watt motor, an AC motor, and it's direct drive, so there's no gearbox. So it's basically the slightly taller grind by weight version of the Speciality, only it's really espresso specific, as it doesn't have removable forks like the Speciality has. I really like the Speciality. For me, it's one of the best espresso grinders for the price you can get it for if you shop around. So a grind by weight version of the Speciality, yes please, as long as it's not overly expensive and we'll come to the price in a bit. As with the Speciality, I rate this really quite high for espresso, especially for more traditional espresso profiles. To me, this and the Speciality make chocolatey espresso even more chocolatey. This or the Speciality wouldn't be the obvious choice for lighter roasts. I just don't think that's what it's about really and it wouldn't be my first choice for pour over. But if you're someone who wants the more traditional crowd pleasing flavour notes from espresso, you'll probably enjoy the espresso you'll get from the Speciality and the Libra. The grinding speed, obviously it'll depend on grind size and depending on the machine I'm dialed in for, I've been finding an 18 gram dose will take about 10 to 12 seconds. In terms of static, I've experienced virtually no static with it. In terms of clumps, I do see clumps, but they're much smaller. It looks like they've been broken up. But if you like nice, fluffy, completely clump-free pucks, you'll probably benefit from a bit of WDT. Silent technology, obviously it's not silent as such, but it's the same noise level as a Speciality, which is one of the quieter grinders I've used. I've got a genius idea for making a truly silent grinder, by the way, which I'm going to try and sell to one of the big grinder brands. Create a grinder that automatically plays really loud music while grinding so you won't hear the grinder. So it'd be silent. Patent pending. Not. 
I do actually like the sound they make. It's quite a low pitch hum. And most of the sound you're hearing is actually the beans grinding. So you're not hearing loud high pitch motor sounds like you get with certain attention seeking grinders. Shut it, Sete. <laughs> Put the Sete over there just to make me look really stupid. <laughs> Personally, I love the stepless adjustment on the grinder. I think for espresso, it's one of the easiest adjustment dials. It's just really straightforward and you can make tiny adjustments. If you're wanting an all-rounder grinder for regular jumping from pour over to espresso, for example, then I can see why a grinder with an adjustment like this wouldn't be the best option for you. But personally, I don't think the Mignon grinders are made to be all-rounder grinders. There are Mignon grinders that are specifically for brew, Chrono, Filtro, Brew, Pro. If you're looking for an all-rounder, then there are other grinders that you'd probably be better off looking at. I think most people interested in the Libra will mainly be looking for an espresso grinder. I'll now talk about my favourite thing about this grinder, which is the grinding by weight precision. Most of the time, I've actually found it to be bang on, literally exactly the dose I've requested. And I'm testing this with the Akaya Luna, which is very precise. Occasionally, it's 0.1 grams out, and a few times, it's been 0.2 grams out. But more often than not, when I test it, it's spot on, so it's amazingly accurate. So that's my favourite thing, and I'll now tell you my least favourite thing, which is the portafilter recognition, the FH notification. When you put the portafilter in, it recognises and tears the portafilter and then grinds. If it has a problem with this, it gives you the FH filter holder message, and you have to wait a few seconds and then try again. During the first few days, this was in danger of being Shakanetsu Hadoukund through the wall, which would have been a surprise for the neighbours. Shakanetsu Hadoukund! As the FH error was happening a lot. I spoke to Eureka and they suggested a few things. The one thing that did work was I moved it from a position on the counter that isn't perfectly flat to a flatter, more stable location. This worked, so if you're getting this a lot, try moving it to a flatter, more stable location. It still does this occasionally. I do find the forks are just slightly oversensitive. If I put them on on a slight angle or from a bit clumsy when I do that, it happens, but it's not a huge deal. I have told Eureka this, they probably think I'm a clumsy idiot and they're probably right and it's not a massive deal, I only get this occasionally now. The only other thing I don't love about it, to be honest, is the hopper. It's fine, it's just a hopper, but the grinder itself looks so stunning and feels so high quality and then the hopper is just a bit meh. I've always thought this about the Mignon hoppers. I don't really mind the hopper itself that much, although I think a dark coloured UV resistant material might be a better option for home machines, as home users do tend to have beans in the hopper for longer than in a commercial setting. But if they could do something with the lid, just a slightly thicker, nicer feeling and nicer looking lid, maybe with a rubber seal, I think that would finish this grinder off really nicely. Maybe if they just offered something like this as an optional extra, that'd be an idea. The Eureka dosing funnel is available in three versions, a 54mm version for the Sage or Breville 54mm portafilters, 28mm tall and two 58.3mm versions for 58mm portafilters, a 28mm tall one and a shorter 22mm tall version. They're very nice quality magnetic dosing rings. Whether they're going to be included in the box or sold as optional extras remains to be seen. I think that's down to the retailer. You can use your current dosing ring if you have one or you can use them without a dosing ring. The Mignon grinders are easy to take apart to clean, just one screw cleverly hidden by the badge. Once you're inside, it's all very self-explanatory, nothing complex. So overall, I really don't have many bad things to say about this grinder. I've really enjoyed using it. Actually, I have a few very good grinders here, including some commercial grinders. I bought the Fiorenzato F64 Evo Pro recently, and I have to say, if this was my grinder and I had to pick one to use here every day, I'd probably pick the Libra over some much more expensive grinders for espresso with the beans I use here, which is nearly always Seaworks Chocolate Brownie Blend, as the espresso is great and it's just so nice and convenient to use. In terms of cost, the US RRP is $799 for all colours except for the Chrome, which is $849. And it looks like they're going to be around £650 in the UK for most colours, so maybe £700 or so for the Chrome version. There is a lot of competition for espresso grinders at this price point, but not so much for grind by weight grinders. The obvious comparison is a Barazza Sete 270 Wii, and let me know in the comments or in the community thread if you'd be interested in seeing a comparison between these two grinders. If there's enough interest, we'll do one. Over half a million Street Fighter coin-operated arcade units were sold, generating more than a billion dollars in revenue, which has nothing to do with clicking the like button, but it does allow Wes to use this like button click audio. Hadouken! 
Thank you very much for watching and if you're a stan for coffee and you enjoyed this video, we've got tons of content about how to make better coffee at home to take you from beginner to home barista. We've got reviews and how-tos on the most popular machines. If you like the sound of that, click on my face to subscribe. Tatty bye!